Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to Thursday Theorist. Um, sorry it took me so long to get this one done. Uh, I had to reread. This is one of the, the longer books I have left. Um, it's not that long. I mean, the paperback copy is 658 pages. I don't think the, uh, the hardcover... By the way, we're talking about Black House. Probably get ahead of myself. <laughs> um, I think the hardcover isn't too far away from that. I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, it's 615 versus 650, so it's still a chunk of book. Um, considering nowadays he's right at, I think the, the last two books were 500, no, uh, The Outsider and, uh, The Institute are supposed to be the same amount of pages, so I don't know if he's working to a, uh, a word count limit or if he's working to a certain thing or he's gotten into a, uh, routine, but I find that interesting that, you know, two of his books back to back are going to be the same page count. But we're talking about Black House today. Um, this series, if you don't know, I think it's uh, episode 57. Um, this series, I go into spoilers. Um, I discuss all of the connections between the, the Dark Tower um, and my own theories that have not been verified by King. So if you're down for that, hang around. Um, let's see here. I am going to go through... I have, for, the, for those of you triggered by people who write in books... Look away now, children. <laughs> I have notes all throughout. All, well, some of this is actually on the paper, but I don't know if you can... I have notes all down the, the margins of everything uh, in the back, and that's what I do with my uh, paperback copies. I don't plan on ever selling these. Uh, these will likely end up going to a charity shop when, uh, when I die. But uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm going to go through... I have some notes. We're going to be flipping back and forth. Um... I have a quote here. It says, uh, The human soul contains an infinity of rooms. After all, some of them vast, some no bigger than a broom closet, some locked, some few imbued with a radiant light. Um, I, I felt that that was uh, a... It, it, whether it be Straub or King who wrote that, I feel like that is a quote, not only a, 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 true, a true quote, um, as far as the brain is concerned. And later... And, not later on. Uh, it's very well. It's very close behind this one. You have Dreamcatcher, where the idea that you have your memory storage unit and all that stuff. Um, I find these little passages um, in King's books that that harken to other stories, and maybe they do, maybe they don't. Maybe he wrote them around the same time, um, and he just you know pieced them together, or he had one idea, and that's one thing that I'm going to talk about later with the Dark Tower series is, but. Basically, decade by decade, he had certain ideas that he cobbled together and added to the Dark Tower universe. That's why all of his stuff eventually, even the early stuff like Carrie, ties into the Dark Tower because he went back and made it tie in to the Dark Tower. Um, I thought I think that's exceedingly cool that he would do that to make sure that his entire bibliography connected. Um, my my theory, by the way, is you know that. The Tommy Knockers and Midworld and all that, as far as that's concerned, that that they, they, well, the Tommy Knockers and a aliens are from Midworld. They're the they're the old ones. They're from the Prim, you know, whatever it might be. They're creatures from that universe, and we just happen to call them aliens. Uh, Pennywise from It is one of those creatures. The Outsider is one of those creatures. The aliens from Dreamcatcher are those creatures, because all these tre creatures react in the same way. They either feed off of fear, they eat children, all these all these creatures have the same uh, characteristics. So, and there's way too much in the Stephen King universe for that to be, oh, that's just him reusing ideas. I honestly, especially in The Outsider, if you want to watch my Thursday Theorist on that, especially with the end of The Outsider, you cannot say that, that, that these Creatures are not connected. Pennywise, Dreamcatcher, Tommyknockers. But where I go with Carrie is, I connect Carrie, and this is episode number one, way back in the way back. I connect Carrie because Carrie was in Chamberlain, Maine, and Haven, where Tommyknockers happened, isn't too far away from Chamberlain, Maine, as far as the, uh, and Patrick, by the way, these are both uh, fictional towns. Chamberlain and uh, Haven. So, me, me and Patrick are going to be working on a book of just Stephen King's fictional towns. Uh, hopefully that comes together. Um, I have so many projects going, who knows when or if it'll happen. But uh, we're going to try anyways, because with his research uh, potential, he's really, really good at cataloging things. And with my knowledge of the Stephen King universe, hopefully we can get something going. 
But with Carrie, I think that the the farther away from Haven you get, the less the powers are, um, uh, the the less the effects of the ship happen. Um, but as far as like tainting water supplies or uh, tainting the air, whatever you want to call it, that ship has existed for a long time in the dirt. Um, now there's going to be spoilers for the entire Stephen King universe, so if you don't want that, GTFO. Um, but before Bobby digs it up in the Tommyknockers, there are plenty, plenty of, uh, of, there's plenty of time that the ship has been down there in the earth, whereas, uh, yeah, she digs it up and it gets more powerful, but who's to say that that, that force has not, you know, bled over because once she start, once Bobby digs it out of the ground, all of these, uh, all the people in the town, uh, spoilers for Tommy Knockers. All the people in the town end up with some kind of ability or psychic ability or some kind of mental ability, basically. Um, and I think that that has over. That's why all of Stephen King's books have some kind of psychic. Uh, now, as far as that tying to Midworld, like I said, Pennywise is definitely a creature from Midworld. Whether he's like the Crimson King or part of the Crimson King or whatever it is, or like Mr. Munchen in this book, we'll get to that. Uh, it's going to be a pretty long episode, but. Uh, in fact, I may have to split it in two because I only have 21 minutes uh, left in this one. So if I have to cut, that's what the cut is for, to, to piece the two together. Anyways, so going back to this one, that's how I connect all of this stuff. And that, that's not really important to this, uh, this book. But just to, I mean, we're, we're 57 episodes away, or 56 episodes away from the first episode. So just to give you guys... A recap of where we've gone so far. That's it. Y'all hear that train? <laughs> okay. Let's see here. Uh, on page 49, there's a lot of stuff I, I'm, I marked in here that is obvious. Of course, it ties into the Dark, the dark Tower directly um, with the Crimson King and Sheol, or however you want to pronounce it. It's like, it's S-H-E-O-L, uh, which is... Which, I have to go back and do an update video for Revival because Revival connects hard to this one. Um, so there's some Revival spo spoilers for you. Like I said, it's spoilers for all of Stephen King's catalogs. So uh, this is a geek discussion for uh, super fans of Stephen King. So if you're, you're here and he's like, he's just spoiling everything. Yeah, that's the point of the show. So bye. Um, but the... It, with, with Revival, the end of Revival obviously happens in Endworld. Now, I mean, there, there's so much... Sheol is mentioned in Revival. There's so many connections there that I completely forgot about. Like I said, I was not in a good place the first time I read this. Um, and they were so far apart, but I do believe that Revival and Black House were written close together. I could be way off. Um, it could have just been an idea that he had sitting around, um, or it could just be part of his canon universe in his head. He's like, I'm just going to tie this together here at the end. Um, I find it strange that he, he tends to tie in uh, weird books to each other. Like, uh, forget all the connections that I mentioned. Pennywise is mentioned in, in Dreamcatcher. So, as I said, Pennywise Lives is written on Tractor Brothers, whatever it is. Uh, Tractor Brothers, just to upset Patrick. I'm, just, I'm kidding, dude. I'm kidding. Um, but that, that place, it's written on that. Um, sometimes I tend to misspeak and mispronounce things. Any fans of the channel will tell you that. Um, <laughs> I have a problem pronouncing things, but I do know the actual names of these things. Um, now, with, with that, so he ties these things, like 11, uh, 22, 63, that has Richie and Bev from, from It, and I find it fascinating. Um, also, It is a centerpiece of the entire King universe. It's right smack dab in the middle, and things branch off from that book all the time. Even more so, I think, than The Dark Tower, because he's bringing up Derry and all that stuff. We're constantly going back to Derry. Pennywise, or the town of Derry, is mentioned as much if not the Crimson King throughout this, or the Randall Flag in the Stephen King universe. Now, going on with my notes, there's a lot of stuff I have to skip over here. So if I take time to to come down, if I if I take time to look down, I apologize. I know it's not fun watching someone read, uh, but let's see here. Oh, let's see. Wiz on page 249, the Wizard of Oz is mentioned. This is the second time in this Talisman series that the Wizard of Oz has been mentioned. And the color green is important. We discussed that in Talisman. It pops up all the time. Patrick uh, looked it up and it's found the color green is a <laughs> green um, is a symbol throughout the the Stephen King universe. 
And then when you get to Wizarding Glass, uh, the fourth Dark Tower book, it literally ends in the em Emerald Kingdom or something like that, uh, which I thought was pretty cool. But the Wizard of Oz is mentioned in this one, and there's a character named Wendell Green. So once again, we're back on that Wizard of Oz bullshit. Um, <laughs> I say bullshit because it's very, very weird to see King play in other people's playgrounds. Um, people have been known to play in his, and it's funny that that circular, you know, that that thing, just storytelling, carrying on other stories. Uh, 259, someone says thank you. Um, T H A N K E E. That's, of course, from the Dark Tower. Uh, 264, there's a green car. Uh, 300, page 300, there's a revival reference. Uh, of course, it wasn't a revival reference back then, unless, of course, it was. And this is one of the reasons why. Um, let's see here. Okay, there's. I, I actually didn't check this, but if you guys want to do some fact checking for me. Um, let's see here. We are talking about, uh, about Tyler, Mr. Sawyer. Do you know that lookout point on Highway 93, right where it reaches the top of the big hill about a mile south of Arden? Where do they go to the lookout point in Revival? If, if I'm completely off base, that's fine. It just seems like with the hard connect for the ending of Revival and Sheol being mentioned in Revival, I'm wondering if this is the same thinny area uh, that they're talking about, and like I said I could be completely off base. I forgot to check it before. I don't know. Why I just looked right over my <laughs> looked right over that one. But that's something for the community to do. I always like to leave something for you guys to find. So if you guys want to fact check that, go ahead. Um, there's also something to take into account that highways and byways and county roads and all that stuff change all the time. So maybe it could also be a twinner of the area, but it's a lookout point. There's a lookout point in Revival. Take that for what you will. Um, I like connections like that. Uh, 417... Oh, actually, no. We want to talk about 398 first. 398, uh, I seem to remember that uh, I ha found a connection to uh, the Regulators and Desperation. And it's... Uh, let's see here. When Jack said said it was back in the woods, I knew what he was talking about. It had a clear place surrounded by all these sparkling lights. Once again, we have... Um, any illusion or glamour used in the Stephen King universe is usually just lights. You have the dead lights from, um, from it, from Pennywise. I think the entity Pennywise is those lights, the dead lights. I think that is the entity and he just got stuck in the form of the spider. King says in the book that he got, that uh, Pennywise got stuck in the form of a spider and that's not his final form. He just couldn't remember what his final form is. What's more forgettable than some lights? Right? Um, next on, on, on that list, we have Tack, who in The Regulators is basically reduced to a bunch of red lights. So you have another entity that is just basically lights. Um, and then to top that all off, we have on page 417, uh, I wrote in here, exploding eyes. Yes, two separate things destroy his concentration. The first is that he sees Mouse slamming himself back and forth on his bike as he goes into the curve, as if he is trying to scratch his back on the thickening air. I love that line, by the way. Um, the second is that the pressure behind his eyes triples in force, and immediately after he sees Mouse going into what he is, sh what is surely a fall, the blood vessels in his eyes explode from deep red, his vision shifts rapidly to almost black. Ooh, it's hot out here. Hang on, y'all. Let me... Ooh. Hey, Patrick. I know you don't like cutting away, so I'm uh, hanging out here. Okay, so I need to remember to bring a towel out here with me, but all right. So, uh, so once again, you have exploding eyes. Now, these are just the vessels, but there's a pressure. Uh, if you remember in the regulators, uh, I think in desperation also, any time Tech took someone over, the eyes bulged because there was an immense pressure in the head. Also, we can go all the way back to Firestarter with uh, Charlie and her father. I always forget the dude's name. I apologize. Charlie and her father, any time he used his powers, he got a nosebleed. It's, it's just more the same, man. It's just more the same. Um, let's see here. Uh, 431, he talks about a thousand, thousand doors. Um, yeah, it's 431. Sorry, let me read the actual quote to you. Alright, uh, world spin, oh yeah, world spin around, 
Worlds spin around him. I'm not good at reading out loud, y'all. Sorry. Worlds spin around him. Worlds within worlds and other worlds alongside them. Separated by a thin, thinny, thin membrane composed of a thousand, thousand doors. So once again, to the guy that said thinnies cannot exist in doorways and doorways are not thinnies. It says right there, man, that the doorways are at the thin spot. So, <laughs> Anyways, he probably isn't going to watch this, uh, but there, I think that it was on, um, if I remember correctly, it was uh, The Running Man, when I bring up Co-op City, and the dude's like, Dutch Hill is in da 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 Dutch Hill. I don't know New York. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know New York. If Dutch Hill, I thought Dutch Hill was just like a suburb area, or like just like Co-op City. I have no idea what these places are. But I didn't even know if it was maybe a street, um, and it's and I'm still working my way through my I think fifth sixth time through the wastelands. I've read that book more than any other Dark Tower book. Um, but I, I love that book. It's one of my favorite Stephen King books of all time. Not just my favorite Dark Tower book, but it's in my top five King books of all time. So here we go. Um, if only you know how to find them. It's talking about the doors and the thinnies and all that good stuff. Uh, 456, he literally mentions the Little Sisters of Illyria. Um, it, you can't get any stronger connections here. Uh, I did not bring up in my, uh, my Thursday... Did I do a Thursday Theories for Little Sisters? I don't think I have yet. I think I was going to do it... Yeah, I'm going to do it first. Actually, no, I'm going to do it last. That's one of the very last things I'm going to do because the book, in my opinion, the, the short story, I should say, and everything is eventual, makes no sense in the canon of the Dark Tower series, but we'll talk about that when we get there. Um... Next up, we have a uh, 467. We talk about breakers. You got Ted Brodigan, uh, that that whole crew. Um, the breakers are just you know these children with psychic abilities, psychic powers. Again, we're dealing with this theme of psychics and mind powers. Carrie, Firestarter, uh, Abra from Doctor Sleep. I mean, the list goes on. There's numerous. The, Danny from The Shining, numerous children throughout this time, and all of them, I feel, are breakers. They all, there's, all of them have that quality, and most of them, I think Danny is the one, Danny is the one on the outside. Most of them are from Maine or around the area. Now, um, there's also, you know, the, the reach of the Dark Tower is not just in Maine. So, I'm not saying that, you know, it's only in Maine. I believe it can be just anywhere, of course, but the, the reasoning for the psychic ability so much in Maine, like everybody in Maine's a psychic, the Stephen King, my explanation, my theory is because of the Haven ship. You know, over the years, it's this and that and the other, um, but it's also funny, in the comment section of my Carrie video, people said, well, it says specifically that she got the powers from her grandfather, but... Carrie, Martha White's mother had these powers also, so I'm not quite sure what y'all are talking about with it's only from dudes. Like, it can only be passed down from dudes because Martha White's mother had had these abilities. It skips a generation, yes, but her, for her, her, I think it says her, he, she got it from her father, that's passed down right there, um, so I'm not sure, someone else mentioned skipping a generation, so that's not correct either, because the father passed, maybe passed it down to Carrie, but what I'm saying is, this stuff, that doesn't have to be the reasoning, people get stuff wrong all the time, and if you remember when they said that in the Carrie, in Carrie, it's someone else writing in the book. It's speculation inside of the universe. It's not fact. It's not the narrator saying, hey, this is it. This is the speculation of people trying to make sense of an odd occurrence. Okay, next up. We have, uh, let's see here, Age of Poisoned Thought. Uh, I don't know what, oh, what is that? 467, is that what I, is that what I marked? Let's see here. Uh, page... Let's see here. Um, but they're... Or, okay. Uh, rational beings have always harbored telepaths among their number. I was just saying that. Uh, that's true in all worlds, but they're ordinarily rare creatures. Prodigies, you might say. But since the age of poisoned thought came to your world, Jack, since the age of poisoned thought... What does a ship in, in Tommyknockers do? It poisons these people. It ends up giving them psychic powers and whatnot. But it poisons them. All the teeth fall out of their head. They look like ghosts. They're, they're gaunt. They're terrifying looking individuals. They got vagina tentacles. All different kinds of... These people are fucked up, man. These people are messed up. The age of poisoned thought. So you have thought, psychic ability, 
the age of poison thought. It literally says, rational beings have always harbored telepaths among their number. That's true in all worlds, but they're ordinarily rare creatures. Prodigies, you might say. But since the age of poison thought came to your world, infested it like a demon, such beings have become much more common. Common! Not as common as slow mutants in the blasted lands, but common, yes. I, come on, that ties into my entire, my entire theory. My entire theory. Now, does it, does that technically, it, uh, uh, come on, this, this stuff is too, is too close together to actually be a coincidence. Now, did King intend it? Probably not. But the theory works. Uh, 57 episodes in, and I have proved myself time and time again that the theory does pan out if you look at the small details. Um, and people have mentioned uh, issues with some of my theories in the past, and I, I've said, you know, I'm wrong, it could be whatever. I, I've even found some better theories from you guys. So the community as a whole, I want the input. But I think I did it, y'all. 57 episodes in, I think we have finally come full circle that all these things are connected to the Dark Tower, even as far back as Carrie. There was a lot of comments like, I don't see how this could be connected because it was his first book, he didn't have it in his mind. Yeah, but he also wrote The Gunslinger before he wrote Carrie. So, I mean, all this, he also wrote the Bachman books. People have said, I don't think the Bachman books tie into the Stephen King universe. That's fine, that's fair, but there's connections in there. Derry is mentioned in The Running Man. All these things, I feel, are connected. If you want, if you want to debate me, I'll be down there in the comment section. You know how I do. But, okay, let's, let's continue on. Um, 487. I've mentioned something in here. It's like Randall Flagg, Pennywise, and something else. Uh, Abala. Oh, okay, so this is, I have a theory that each one of these people are someone from the Stephen King universe. You got Abala, Abala Dune, uh, and Mr. Munchen, and the Crow Gorg. So Abala Dune, Mr. Munchen, and the Crow Gorg. Just three old pals walking together on Knight's Plutonian shore. I'd love to have a discussion down there in the doobly-doo about which one of those is the Crimson King, which one of those is Randall Flagg, and which one of those might actually be Pennywise. Is Pennywise a prince or an exiled king or some other kind of creature like Crimson King? You know what I'd like to see? If I ever wrote in the Stephen King universe, I would tackle where Pennywise came from and I would make it either a, either make him a, a prince, a, a you know, predecessor to the Crimson King or whatever it may be, but that's what I would do. If I ever played in the Stephen King universe, that would be what I did. Okay, so, so, but again, on page, this is the paperback version, I don't know what page it is, but it's 487 in the paperback version um, is what I'm talking about. So you have Abala Dune, you have uh, the Crow Gorg, G-O-R-G, and you have, or it's just Abala for the first one, A-B-B-L-A-L-A-H, I think, Abala, Abala Dune, whatever, um, and then Mr. Munchen, and then the Crow Gorg, who, these archetypes, who... Out of those three, who do you think Pennywise is, who do you think Randall Flagg is, and who do you think the Crimson King is? That's my question. Okay, um, I already talked about that stuff in my review. 567, they, he literally name drops Rose Red, uh, which is a movie and not a book. The Diary of Ellen Brim, Brim, Rauer, Brim whatever the hell her name was, was not written by Stephen King, so we're not going to talk about that here, um, and I don't talk about the Stephen King movies, even if he wrote them. Um, because that's just a, that, that's just um, a clusterfuck <laughs> that I'm not going to get into. Uh, 569, The Gray Man. So, let's see here. What did I find with The Gray Man? Grays are a thing, of course. I mean, even from early, early King, from Night Shift, uh, a gray matter uh, is, again, you know, alien kind of kind of thing. And then you have uh, Pennywise, you have Dreamcatcher, you have Tommyknockers. All these creatures have the same, um, not same abilities, but the same characteristics, which I find fascinating. Um, let's say Billy Gaffney, Playmate Evers, it was the gray man took Billy, it was the boogeyman. So they're talking about that, I think that's an actual quote from the, uh, from the New York World Telegram. It may not be, but it's in regards to, uh, uh, Albert Fish being the gray man. So I, I found that, that was interesting also. So how long had this, uh, Albert Fish connection been, been there for, for Stephen King's and Stephen King's mind? Or is that a Straub connection? Um, let's see here. In 471, Antak, uh, A-N-T-A-K is mentioned. 591, they're talking about the trains, Blaine and Patricia, and then there's one other one that we never actually see. 
603, um, let's see here, 603, there, I think there's a fight that happens, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that it's, uh, okay, yes, okay, this is a whole section I'm going to read to you, uh, because I hear it too, and feel it in my stomach, this is when the crew is at Black House trying to, you know, win the day, it's not your breakfast, it's Black House, Jack holds out the squeeze bottle, go on, dab some more around your nostrils, get some right up in, right up in, you'll feel better, projecting absolute confidence, that's, not part of the thing. He says, you'll feel better. Projecting absolute confidence. That's the way he said it, I guess. Because it's not about secret weapons or secret formulas. It's certainly not about honey. That's when they're putting the honey that around their nose. It's about belief. Again, we tie back to the Stephen King universe because... Sorry, I had to cut, but I had two minutes left and I didn't want to risk the, uh, the thing just stopping on its own. So, here we are. We're back. Uh, and I, I didn't want to leave you guys with that. I was about to do my outro, and I decided, no, you know what, I'm going to continue on, and we're just going to do one super long video. Um, on So we're talking about belief. In It, they beat Pennywise by believing they can. Again, this all comes down to mind powers. It all comes down to the power of imagination. Even telepaths, telekinesis, uh, uh, pyrokinesis, all that stuff is the imagination. They imagine things happening, and it happens. The entirety of Stephen King's universe, even Midworld as a whole, is about imagination. Midworld is a collection of all these stories. You got Harry Potter, the Marvel Universe, uh, the Wizard of Oz. All this stuff is is connected. And I, I know I'm getting super excited, like you know, like <laughs> like a like a nut job conspiracy truther or something like that. But I I dig how he has connected all of his stuff over the years, and I'm super excited to finally have proof in 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 this book that so many of these things do actually connect and it's not just my crazy mind because he has gone back and connected these things now the first you know two times I read these books did I notice all these connections no but the more that I read them the more that I see the little nuances the little times where King has just thrown in a line explaining something and it's like whoa, whoa wait 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 so how, how that connects that connects and it's one of those things it's all about belief and the power of imagination and if there's one theme for the Stephen King universe that I find just irresistible, a siren's call for the Stephen King universe, is that thought that imagination is all powerful. And that, that's what, to this day, this dude, this author is still creating vast worlds and doing things differently and taking risks that no other author his age is doing or has done before. I honestly believe he is our greatest living st uh, storyteller and I truly believe that through, that History will be very, very kind to Stephen King in in the later years <laughs> who were all around. That people will look back at Stephen King and go, he was better than Shakespeare. He was better than Dickens. He's the one that we need to be focusing on because I don't think any other author has the output that he has, the eclectic output that he has, and has been consistently good throughout the years. You can say, oh, it's the old king is best king. Yeah, but we still have this whole this whole shelf down here and over half of this this shelf from after 99, after the accident, or after King sobered up for good kind of deal. Um, has, has fantastic literature in it. Lisi's story, Duma Key, The Outsider, you know, numerous, numerous ones. <laughs> we're not gonna, we're not, we do not talk about Elevation on this channel, um, or or Sleeping Beauties for that matter. But um, I, which reminds me, I gotta update my top five worst Stephen King books. Um, but I, I'm getting off on a tangent, of course, as I always do. I think that's the reason why some of you watch these videos. But. Uh, as far as belief is concerned, I love that idea that belief is the thing that holds together all of Stephen King's universe because he's a fiction writer. I mean, what else would, right? It just makes total sense. Um, and on page 617, you know, I, t I tied, very loosely, I tied Tack into the, uh, into the, uh, let's see here, into the Dark Tower universe. Um, not Dark Tower universe. Uh, I tie tied tack in with the talisman universe i'm sorry because of the knights with the red eyes right well in here in 617 there's a room with living cartoons in it i mean come on you got the regulators there of course uh let's see here um mr oh we got of course we got uh ted brodigan uh, da, 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 da. and 631. 631 is important for a tie-in to uh to revival but it's kind of, it's not literal. 
Um, what he's talking about when he's talking about ants here, I'm, I'm drenched. So it, it's like I'm looking over at my, it's, it's 91 degrees in this office. I can't run the uh, the AC unit because it's so hot, so you're just going to have to just, just stare at me. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, can you even see it on camera? I don't know. You probably can because my hair is sticking to my head. That's another reason why I shave off my hair usually. I'm kidding. That has nothing to do with it. Um, but, okay, let's see here. He, so th they're talking about End World. They're in End World, and uh, Jack points at the ugly complication of struts and belts and girders and smoking chimneys. Okay, that is, that's not word for word, but that is a almost perfect description of what, uh, what's his name? Charlie? Jamie. Jamie sees in Revival. Charlie's the bad guy. Or... The, the bad guy. I don't know if you really want to call him a bad guy. Um, but I guess he does bad things. But that, I, I, that, that's, that's a whole discussion for another video. Um, or down there in the doobly-doo. Was, was, Char was Pastor Charlie really a bad guy? Discuss that down there, too. Um, but anyways, the, it, it continues on. Jack points to the ugly complication of struts and belts and girders and smoking chimneys. He points at the straining ants. Okay? The straining ants. The big combination disappears up into the clouds and down into the dead ground. How far in each direction? A mile? Two? There are children above the clouds, shivering in oxygen masks as they trudge the treadmills and yank the levers and turn the cranks. Now, are there so many children that down below that they look like ants? Or is it literally, or is it literally the ants from the end of Revival? Uh, that, that's another, I also had someone on the Revival Review, I think they actually deleted their comment after I responded to them, but um, there was someone on the Revival uh, Thursday Theorist that said he, he believes that Revival exists outside of the Stephen King universe, period, that it's like a Bachman book. While I do not disagree that it's like a Bachman book, um, I disagree completely that it's outside of the Stephen King universe. It is rooted, I mean, it's, I think, what, Ludlow? I always, is it Harlow or Ludlow? I can't. I can never remember the town that uh, Pet Cemetery happens, but Revival happens. Uh, parts of Revival happen in the same town. Um, so we got that, and then it's 6:35. This is just a silly one that I picked out. Uh, okay, uh, da, 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 da. three worlds over from ours. Okay, three worlds over from ours, and in the great city there known as oh, almost Londonorium. So London, basically, uh, Turner Topham, or for two decades, a respected member of parliament, and for three, a sadistic pedophile, bursts abruptly into flame as he strides along the crowded avenue known as Piccadilly. D-E-R-R-Y. Not Piccadilly Square. But, Piccadilly. And Derry, once again, man, all this shit's connected. I, I love it. I, I, I absolutely love it. Uh, things like this uh, excite me, and I did not plan... For Black House to be this far down the line, I plan to do Black House, you know, in order of publication. But for some odd reason, I left. I decided to leave the Talisman books for way far down the line, and I'm glad I did because Black House is one of those books that is hard connects my theory, um, and it's starting to feel less and less like my theory and more like Stephen King's game plan. What do you guys think? If you made it this far, what do you guys think? Tell me all of your comments down there in the doobly-doo, and I'll be down there to talk to you guys. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another Thursday Theorist Review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!